Fantasy is at the center of what every serial killer really is. The human guy might have a bad thought about a person. A serial killer will take that same kernel of immoral or illegal impulse and dwell on it. That kernel becomes a seed, and from that seed grows fantasy. Quote, unquote, normal people have healthy fantasies, meaning that they could readily differentiate between the real and the unreal. A serial killer will dwell on that fantasy until he can no longer resist the urge to see it through. And when he does intentionally act on the impulse, fantasy becomes reality. Is it hard for you to get up in the morning knowing that there may be a serial killer in your neighborhood? Has your life lost its sense of purpose? Do you feel like giving up and staying indoors is the only option? Well, do not despair, because Georgie Ray can help you. Georgie's unique formula has helped millions of people get their lives back on track. People just like you. Georgie has coached major role leaders, FBI, the CIA, Secret Service, and even your local police force. But now it's your turn. Once Major Lee depressed Georgie, turned her life around when she decided she wanted to cast serial killers. Since becoming a criminal profiler, Georgie's achieved a level of success and fulfillment she never thought possible. Now she's going to share her secrets with you in this amazing life changing seminar, How to Catch a Serial Killer. Georgie's simple six-step program will teach you everything you need to know about getting a better life. You're going to be better than Grego McCrary, better than John Douglas, and you're going to be better than Roy Hazelwood. You're going to be the criminal profiler everybody's talking about. If you're not satisfied, Georgie's seminars come with a 100% money-back guarantee. So stop hiding in your house, call the number below, and book your tickets now. Act fast because seats are filling up by the second. But don't just take it from me. Here's some of the magic you can expect at the three-day How to Catch a Serial Killer Seminar. I want to show you how to save your life. I want to show you how to leap out of bed every morning with a smile on your face. I want to give you the ammunition you need to go out there and fight for what you believe in. I want to help you find your passion. I want to show you how I've changed my life because I know what I've learned will help you change your life. I want to share my secrets with you because I know what I've discovered will help you find your own. Carpe diem. You deserve a great life, and I'm going to sh I'm going to show you the path to that life. My name is Georgie Ray, and today I'm going to teach you how to catch a serial killer.
come here all the time and I can see that you're afraid to go out and about your day. I can teach you how to overcome that. You see, there are times in life when you gotta start asking yourself, do I feel safe? Can I make the world a better place to live in? Can I be a winner? So what's it gonna be? Are you, are you in it to win it? I am in it to win it. So, Georgie, she's... She's taking me on as her apprentice. I'm kind of nervous because I'm... Like, not... Like, now, nor have I ever really been a star student. They say you can accomplish anything if you put your mind to it. And I've never really found anything I wanted to put my mind to. But criminal profiling, I think I could really sink my teeth into that. Apply myself. The first step is called profiling input, which involves the collection and assessment of all the materials relating to the specific case. This can usually include photographs taken, of the crime scene and victim, comprehensive background check of the victim, autopsy protocols, other forensic examinations relating to the crime, and any relevant information that is necessary to establish an accurate, pic an accurate picture about what occurred before, during, and after the crime. In the aftermath of any homicide, investigating the crime scene and performing an autopsy are routine steps that law enforcement take in an attempt to solve the crime. Once all this information has been collected, it could be entered into the nationwide database run by the FBI. This program can help to determine patterns or signatures that link separate homicides. A signature is a ritual, something that is done intentionally for emotional satisfaction Something that isn't necessarily to perpetrate the crime. Some, killer, some serial killers pose their victims in a certain way or leave them in a certain place after killing them. Or it might be a method of torture or mutilation. If the crime scene shows evidence of careful planning, the killer is likely to be intelligent and older. If the victim was mutilated in a very disorganized way, her killer is probably mentally disabled and are more likely to be very thin and unkept. I feel the most safe when I'm with Georgie. It's like, it's kind of like having a pit bull that's your best friend. It can talk to you and stuff. Because I know nobody's going to try and mess with me, or no gangbangers are going to try and kill me. It's like, nobody else is going to try and mess with me because she's there, and she'll like mess them up in a way that just mess them up. The second step, decision process models, involves arranging all the information gathered in the previous step into a logical and coherent pattern. This step might also include establishing the number of victims involved and the killer's MO. Every serial killer has an MO. The MO reflects what the killer had to do to commit the crime. This includes everything from luring and restraining his victim to the way he actually murders them. Serial killer's MO can change over time. Essentially, he learns from past mistakes and improves with time. Determining the signature of the, and the MO are both aspects of profiling. For example, if the victim is Caucasian, the killer is probably Caucasian. The third step, 
prime assessment usually involves the reconstruction of the sequence of events and the specific behaviors of both the victim and the unsub. This, really, this can really help the analyst in understanding the role <laughs> each individual has in the crime and should assist in developing the profile of the criminal. One of the most terrifying characteristics of a serial killer is the multiple faces that they can wear. Since some serial killers lack conscious, feelings such as guilt and nervousness rarely enter into their minds. They become very good liars. One of the most frightening examples of this was when one of Jeffrey Dahmer's captives escaped from his apartment. He was naked, had visible wounds, and was actually ran into the police. Dahmer watched his victims talking to the police. He calmly approached them and explained that they were lovers and had a lover's quarrel. He was so calm and articulate that the police actually let him leave with his victim. You got your Jeffrey Dahmers, you know, the Zodiac Killer, Boston Stranglers, Jack the Ripper, Sons of Sam. My point is, they all had a style. They found a way to make it theirs and get noticed. They feel that it's vital that we know who did what. And it's our job to figure it out. Go big and get noticed. Have you done that, Kayla? Well, what does that mean? Just like them. It's your signature, your style, your calling card. You gotta let them know who's catching who instead of who's chasing who around. I don't understand what that means. You'll know when you do. Yeah, you're probably right. Damn right I'm right. You gotta, you gotta make every catch count, Kayla. Because you never know when it's gonna be your greatest. The thing you gotta keep in the back of your mind is, you never know when the life you know could disappear at any moment. The fourth step, the crime profile, is the process of providing a list of background, physical and behavioral characteristics characteristics of the unsub. This stage can give the investigation or the investigators the clue of how to identify and apprehend the unsub because every killer eventually, whether intentionally or not, gives himself up. A serial killer keeps killing until one of four things happen. One, he's caught. Two, he dies. Three, he kills himself. Or four, he just burns out. Some organized serial killers feel the need to taunt the police, which
which also leads to their arrest. Thanks for lunch. Oh, no problem. Listen, um, do you ever worry about your family? Why? Why would you ask? Why would you ask that? I just get the feeling that this is a dangerous job, and and I was watching an episode of Criminal Minds the other day, and the main character's wife gets killed by the serial killer he's after. Tell Jack I need him working the case. What? Tell Jack I need him working the case. <clears throat> Jack, did you hear that? Hi, Daddy. Hi, buddy. Is George a bad guy? Yes, he is. But Jack, I need you on this case with me. Do you understand? I need you to work the case with me. Okay, Daddy. Jack, hug your mom for me. My family's fine. Uh, no, I'm not even. I'm not even worried about them. No, no, I, no, no. This, this is not a dangerous job. This, this job is is the best job in the world. Okay. I have some paperwork to do because I, I think I know who the killer is. So I'm gonna go do my job. I gotta go. Do you want to be safe? Do you want to be se do you want to be secure? Oh, of course you do. Who wouldn't? Well, here's the key to my success. It's called perseverance and discipline. Good old P and D. You must be able to apply perseverance and discipline to this line of work every day, because when the going gets tough, well, that's when you need to suck it up. The fifth step, the investigation involves providing the actual uh, profile to requesting agencies, which, although helps the investigation, is also a pain in the rear, which is where good old P and D come in. The actual profile needs reassessment in case new evidence comes to light or no suspects are generated. Basic profiling is a common investigation tool. The most basic kind of profiling is be on the lookout or all points bulletin. You're probably familiar with these, although you might not have heard them referred to as profile. An APB is a description of a specific suspect accused of committing a specific crime or crimes, usually based on eyewitness accounts. For example, following a bank robbery, police might interview suspects and review surveillance, surveillance camera footage before releasing the following APB. Suspect was last seen in a dark blue Ford pickup truck. He was wearing a red t-shirt and black pants. 
Suspect is described as a white male, five foot ten inches, and and thin, with receding blonde hair. Including a suspect's skin color is common and not usually controversial. It is simply a physical description based on visual evidence gathered at the crime scene. It doesn't make any judgments about other people with white skin. Next in profiling is the psychological profile. Investigators create this profile in the absence of a physical evidence or eyewitness description or to supplement such descriptions. They take what they know about an unknown suspect and his actions and try to create additional information. For example, if a serial murderer has been killing the female employees of a law firm, profilers might find it likely that the killer is a formal male employee or a client of the law firm. I'm very excited about what I'm learning. I mean, it was tough at first, but now I'm really in getting into the whole learning part. It's just so much fun. And Georgie's like, like a really good teacher, and I'm, I'm learning a lot from her. Now I'm gonna go ahead and assume that we've all wanted to kill a serial killer at one time or another. And it's only when we start to act in accordance with our core desires, like saving our families and or loved ones, that we are truly free to be ourselves. Our safe, no serial killer neighbor, neighbored self, the sixth and final step, the apprehension step, has the purpose to cross-check the profile process with the characteristics of the offender once they are apprehended, once it's done, if it's done, then the fun part begins. Okay, so Georgie, she went to go get some coffee or go work on something, I don't know, but I think I know who the killer is, and if I'm right, he's right over there. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna catch him, I'm gonna show George that I have learned. You okay? Yeah. We did it! Yeah, we did. Yeah! Identities of serial killers are often obscure because they have no connection to their victims. They are propelled into this double life. A life in which they openly intersect with society and then a secretive life. And even though they have this double life, they are drawn more and more into the secretive life. It's like a drug addiction. He takes more and more of a given substance until he takes too much and he overdoses. The overdose here is when the two lives intersect. Textbooks tell us that serial killers don't have the capacity to care for others, to form functional relationships. That's the clinical definition of a psychopath, and it's sometimes hard for us to comprehend. That a serial killer cannot differentiate between going to the grocery store to buy a six pack and going to and going to the store to shoot the clerk in the face. How's it going? It's going all right. Uh, how are you? I'm well. Thanks for coming down. So, do you have any thoughts about the verdict? Thoughts about the verdict? Um, well, I guess I knew it was inevitable. I've always thought about my own morality. That's why I became a serial killer in the first place. As far as the verdict goes, I expected it. 
things fall apart. They do. <laughs> it's such an amazing thing. I mean, people go through life complaining about everything, but Georgie, she saw it through. She only focused on what was good for the world, and that's, that's such a special thing to be able to do, and she did it. I can honestly say that I don't see any other job in this world that can bring such joy as the one that Georgie has, or will have. Carpe diem. Georgie changed my life, and I hope that I can make a fraction of the change that she did. Cut! <laughs> 